Wait, remember Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness? Another product of the partnership between Nickelodeon and DreamWorks Animation. Like we just talked about the other week on the channel with the Penguins of Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness was a continuation of one of DreamWorks' most successful animated franchises to date. Based on the Oscar-nominated 2008 Kung Fu Panda movie, the series follows Poe and his adventures with his new friends and peers. While technically the series was released after the second movie, it serves as a bridge between the two in the overall Kung Fu Panda timeline, which I have tattooed somewhere on my body. Just kidding. I will have it tattooed somewhere on my body. The Kung Fu Panda franchise isn't something I've touched upon yet on this channel, but was a significant memory I had growing up considering how much content DreamWorks was pushing and in such rapid succession. Because of that, a lot of their properties were catching my attention. Today, I wanted to take a look back on the series since there is still plenty of Kung Fu Panda coming in the future. If you if you enjoy the video, you better subscribe. Let's talk about everyone's favorite big panda, Poe. I'm not paying you to mess around. You're not paying us at all. You know, watching Poe eat all this food is making me quite hungry. Oh wow, what perfect timing. Who could have planned this? I'd like to take a moment and thank today's sponsor, Factor, a service I have used for all of 2022 personally. Knowing my schedule, working on videos and all that, making food isn't high on that list. I don't have the time to cook, causing me to constantly order in because it was easy. But Factor found a way to make it even easier and in a much healthier and better tasting way. Factor offers fast and healthy pre-prepared meals that come in a delivery kit, straight to your door, with a plethora of options ranging from low calorie, keto, vegan, and vegetarian vegetarian, there is always something that your taste buds will thank you for choosing. Each week you have a list of highly customizable options to choose from for your upcoming shipments. It's literally as easy as popping this into the microwave and in less than a few minutes, a nicely prepared meal is ready to eat. Aside from the great meals, Factor sent me over these plant-based smoothies that I have incorporated into my morning routine. And one of my personal favorite meals from them is the Casio e Pepe, which comes with nicely prepared broccoli and cauliflower. This year for me is all about eating better and Factor is aiding in that process for me. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code fringe60 to get 60% off your first factor box. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. Order up. Hope you like it. So as we'll see, a lot of the show's original cast did not return from the film franchise or special shorts, which is typical for the transition from movies to TV. But the actors who came in to lend their voice talents in replacement do a great job at keeping the same feeling of the characters they're now portraying. Our main character is, of course, Poe, everyone's favorite lovable yet flawed big panda boy, voiced by Mick Winger. Carrie Walgren voices Tigress, who is sort of viewed as the leader of the group due to her ambitious attitude and overachieving tendencies. Throughout the series, we see how her and Poe butt heads a lot and clash when out in the field together, but eventually learn to coexist, as well as get more out of the teachings and lessons from Shifu, voiced by Fred Tatashir. Amir Talai is Crane, who tends to think more before jumping into situations, and his ability to fly does come in handy a lot. And I've gotta be honest, I'm kind of struggling to give him more context in the series. He kind of takes the role of a background character more often than not, which is a bummer because I feel like there's a lot his character has to offer. He also clashes with Poe because he is easily annoyed by Poe's antics and fighting that he probably deems immature and unrefined. James C. is Monkey. He is mainly characterized as a chaotic, unpredictable trickster who you'd think would inherently make him friends with Poe by default, but this isn't necessarily the case, at least not at first. Poe does make jokes in the beginning of the series that Monkey is his closest friend, and it's absolutely a stretch, one that he acknowledges. But as the series goes on, they do become more accustomed to each other and grow closer, the two of them not clashing nearly as much as some of the others. Viper is still voiced by Lucy Liu. Viper's positive attitude makes her genuinely difficult to not get along with. Same with Mantis as well. The two of them were the first of the five to extend themselves to Poe when he first arrived in the Jade Palace in the original movie. So it makes sense that they would get along with him in the series as well. But unlike Mantis, Viper's character is sort of not expanded upon in the series much like Crane. Max Cook is Mantis, the smallest member of the group who is actually the most outspoken. He does have a sense of humor which makes him a fun 
fun combination when put in any situation with Poe and Monkey. In the series, we learn of Mantis's dating histories, which tend to fuel a lot of the conflict when it comes to his self-confidence. In one of the episodes, it's discovered that he lied to his ex-fiance about being the Dragon Master to help bandage his ego after she left him at the altar. In another episode, too, we learn a bit more about Mantis' flawed relationship with his own size when he takes advantage of an opportunity to change himself. He is probably the most expanded upon character out of the Fearsome Five, which is fun to see because of how overlooked he felt in the films. You can thank me later. A lot. Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesome. Yeah. We'll be right back. Now back to a brand new Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness. Legends of Awesomeness was developed by Peter Hastings, who is known for his work on Pinky and the Brain and Animaniacs. The series was originally part of the first projects and the partnership between Nick and DreamWorks. The series was ordered for 26 episodes by Nick in 2009. Originally meant to premiere in 2010, before being pushed back to 2011, the show started off with a sneak preview in September of that year, with the show officially premiering on November 7, 2011, following new episodes of SpongeBob SquarePants. The series garnered a a lot of mixed reviews, some calling it harmless, but also not beneficial for kids in any way, while some say that it is tolerable for adults. But the series has been decorated with multiple daytime Emmy wins, and even a primetime Emmy nomination. And in my opinion, the show did leave me with some good memories and some good moments. A lot of the frustration with some fans is the voice change with Poe. The role that was previously filled by Jack Black in the movies thus far was filled by a voice actor who wasn't too unfamiliar with the character. Mick Wingert had previously voiced Poe in the 2008 and 2011 Kung Fu Panda video games, and I feel like the general audience approval rating of this is about 50-50, and I agree that in the series he pretty constantly kinda sounds like him. Like if there was an equivalent of squinting but for your eyes, I can definitely see it, or hear it. Regardless, I still think Mick, already having played Poe before, was doing the best he could without being Jack Black. What really gets me is the theme song, he really went all out with this one. Unless for some reason we're all being bamboozled and they actually brought back Jack Black to sing the main theme song. I'm genuinely impressed with how much it does sound like Jack here. In an interview, Mick talks about how the casting usually goes during these things. There are two main points he made. One, that it's typical for people with similar orchestra placements to be cast as one another, meaning they genuinely have the same sound. And two, that you also can't hire someone that sounds like they're trying really hard to do the perfect and impression, because the strain will come across in their work. Low effort is better when it comes to this kind of stuff, and while I agree that he naturally does have a similar sound, I appreciated that I wasn't being slapped in the face with a bombastic impersonation the entire time I was watching the series. I think that if he wanted to sound exactly like Jack Black, Mick could, which is probably why the theme song sounds so similar. The only two characters that ended up returning to the series from the original movies is James Hong as Mr. Ping and Lucy Liu as Viper which is pretty cool. When moving from the movies to the TV show, a lot needed to be carried over and further expanded upon. One of those elements was the martial arts in terms of blocking and making sure that the way they were fighting was correct. So they brought in Sifu Kisu, who is well known for his work as a martial arts consultant behind the scenes of stuff like Avatar The Last Airbender. The music also needed more attention in the series, which can be thanks to the track team, which included Jeremy Zuckerman and Benjamin Wynn. It may sound like a familiar your name if you're at all interested in the music of Avatar The Last Airbender. A lot of Chinese instruments used in that show are also used in Legends of Awesomeness here, making a lot of the instrumental sounds recognizable. The 3D animation though is one thing that gets a lot of people talking. As I mentioned when talking about the Penguins of Madagascar previously, there is also going to be a noticeable difference in animation quality moving from a major motion picture as opposed to a series that's limited in both finances and time, especially when we're talking fur. In interviews with the producing team, they mentioned that they tried their best to mimic the look and feel of the film as much as they possibly could, which is always going to be a challenge for a TV series. And there are some settings, like when the Furious Five and Poe are in the Jade Palace, the color palette and general details are actually not that bad. It's when we see our characters venture off to newer lands like open fields that I really started to notice the lack of detail in the tone and space around our characters. It's 
not that it looks bad, it's that it looks empty, for the most part. And speaking of our characters, the movie budget to CG television show Art Change managed to work with the penguins of Madagascar because of how sleek penguins already are. But with Kung Fu Panda, the most important character, the driving force for the entire series, Poe, isn't fuzzy. And it's very noticeable and does kind of make the series feel more a bit like plastic, if that makes any sense. Without the original fur that everyone who is familiar with within the original movies, it was difficult for me to really get into the feel of the series specifically for that reason. It's the difference of buying a toy at a store versus getting the Happy Meal toy. More often than not, the animation was definitely not the strongest part of the show, at least from the look of some of the characters and some of the settings. But one positive thing I will note though, is that frequently in the series we get these little 2D animated interjections. And the animation there is extremely simple, but it's still beautiful, it's cinematic and effective, and kind of my favorite little parts of the series in general. I feel tonality wise, the show has a bit of an issue going back and forth between trying to just be funny or trying to be serious action, often falling on one side or the other more, with conflicts in the show raging from something pretty tame, more akin to a small town issue, but still having larger arcs or grander ideas that do raise the stakes. Of course, nothing close to where the movies were at for their conflicts, and that's fine. It doesn't have to be that, nor was I expecting it to. The character interactions themselves are fun enough to get you through the show. I just wish that the other characters, the Furious Five, were utilized a bit better. While they are a huge part of the show, like I said, some of the characters of this group just kind of get pushed back to being these secondary background characters. But with that being said, the action in the show across the board is pretty dang fun. It looks good and it feels like there's weight behind it. I mean, the bare minimum I'd want in something with the words Kung Fu in it is for the martial arts to be portrayed well. The humor in the show is pretty okay, I guess. It just kind of feels lacking more in the quality jokes that land, like within the movies. And instead it focuses on more slapstick and some more juvenile skewed humor. And hey, to each their own of course, but it just wasn't connecting with me on that aspect. Really only keeping me interested because of the action and the fact that I do enjoy the characters themselves. I just overall wish that there was something more here. Something that keeps my interest in the series as a whole, but it never pushed too deep within the stories it wanted to tell. Beyond this, what lied for the path ahead for Kung Fu Panda? Hail You're watching a brand new Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness. Now, back to a brand new Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness. The series ran for three seasons, from 2011 to 2016. It has a total of 80 episodes, which is a hefty amount of content that it was able to pump out. One thing to be sure of when we're talking about one of DreamWorks' top franchises is that there will never be a drought. Where there is money to be made, money will be made, which also includes in our near future. After Legends of Awesomeness, the next thing on the list for Poe was the third Kung Fu Panda movie, then another animated series called Paws of Destiny that had a short run of 26 episodes. But even very recently, a new Netflix animated series called Kung Fu Panda Dragon Knight came out in July of 2022, with 11 episodes and a second season on the way for January of 2023. Peter Hastings has returned as a co-developer for the series as well, and had some pretty high hopes for the series considering that Jack Black would be reinstated as the voice of Poe again. Yeah, they got Jack Black for this, and apparently we have the lockdown in 2020 to thank for that. According to Hastings, production had already started when everyone was sent home, and he was curious about if Jack was just sitting at home doing nothing. He got in contact, and Jack was willing to rejoin the franchise specifically on the TV series side. From the perspective of Mick Winger, he says that the series was initially pitched as a third show to build on the momentum of Paul's of Destiny. It was by no means a huge project with the expectation that there would be an A-list celebrity leading the show. But when Jack Black hopped on board, they just set off and then it became a much bigger deal with Netflix. And if that's not enough, come March 2024, we'll be getting a fourth Kung Fu Panda movie. This shocked fans who initially believed that Kung Fu Panda was always meant to be a trilogy, and that the fact that they are on their third show was solidifying that. But considering that it seems the entire main cast of the Furious Five and Poe are on board, this has the potential to not only be really fun, but a smash hit for fans of both the movies and the shows. And in one article, it mentioned that Brian Cranston Cranston may be returning as Poe's biological dad, which just brings a whole new meaning to Poe, we have to cook. 
cook noodles. I, I mean nothing else. If digging into more of DreamWorks catalog off the big screen has really taught us anything, it's that if they have a hit franchise on the big screen, they don't do a bad job translating it to the small screen. While when specifically talking about Legends of Awesomeness, sure, it has its shortcomings. It has a noticeable downgrade in the way parts of it look, it lacks a bit of structure, but it overall has heart and was still at the end of the day a somewhat enjoyable little series. I am looking forward to seeing what is next for the Kung Fu Panda series. Maybe I should make some videos looking into the other two series in preparation for Kung Fu Panda 4, but let me know your thoughts in the comments with your opinions on Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness, or in general the Kung Fu Panda franchise as a whole. Thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe, later!